Connor McDavid is fresh off of winning four trophies at this year's NHL award ceremony. Much like we see in NHL 23 simulations, he won the Art, the Heart, the Ted Lindsay, and the Rocket Richard. Not bad. The man is lightning fast, has outstanding playmaking ability, and he can also score. As is evident by, you know, the Rocket Richard that I just mentioned. But what if Connor McDavid was a grinder? How about a power forward? Or even an enforcer? Well, today we are going to be trying out Connor McDavid the everything. Let's find out together what player type best suits Connor McDavid according to NHL 23. Let's kick it off with good old fashioned playmaking. Connor McDavid. I show the lines once for each player type, but I don't think they change at all. The goalies might flippity flop here and there, but I think that's about it. Just wanted to show them though, so that people understand. In the first playmaking year, Connor finishes second in the Pacific Division, and he puts up 99 points, which is good enough for third in the league. He was a goal a game in the playoffs, and he had 13 points, but unfortunately, the Dallas Stars put them out in round number two. Now, the second year, they only get 87 points as a team and still finish second in the Pacific. That is impressive. Connor only had 79 points this year and wasn't even point a game in the playoffs this time. His team would be deleted in the conference finals, however, by the Colorado Avalanche. In the final playmaking season, the team finishes fourth and Connor finishes just shy of 100 points. Once again, third in the league. He went off in the playoffs this year with 16 points in just 11 games played, but unfortunately could not get past the Jets in round two. Connor will now be joining his line mate Leon Dreisaitl as a sniper. And you know what? He already scores goals. He won the Rocket Richard in real life this season, so I don't think he needs any help, but let's see what happens here. It's not good. They finished seventh in the Pacific the first season, and Connor only puts up 63. That is a big woof, if you ask me. They do have more success in the second year, though. The team would finish sixth in the entire league. McDavid puts up 91 points in 80 games with a plus 32 and only had seven playoff games under his belt. Dreisaitl, though, his line mate, gets the art and the heart. How about that? They were deleted by the Golden Knights in round number one. This year, they finished first in the Pacific with 97 points. McDavid goes off 111. Once more, though, only seven playoff showings. They would be rinsed this time by the Vancouver Canucks. It is now time to try on the two-way forward player type. Still going to be playing with Hyman and Dreisaitl. As I said, I don't think that really changes throughout the whole video. The goalies might switch here and there, though. They finish first in the Pacific Division with 98 points. And McDavid leads the team with 87 points, playing only 71 games. So he kind of got finessed there. 12 playoff showings and 7 points would have the team rinsed in the second round by the Vancouver Canucks. In the second two-way forward year, they finished third in the Pacific, and McDavid gets 109, playing the full 82 games this time. He also had 24 playoff showings and 29 points. He gets the art. He gets the heart. And he gets the Ted Lindsay, but does not get the Stanley Cup. They got destroyed, quite frankly, by the Rangers in the finals there. The last two-way forward year, they finished sixth in the entire league, and McDavid's up there once again with 98 points. Unfortunately, couldn't go on another deep playoff run, only 12 games this year, and it would be the Vancouver Canucks once again. They just seem to have Edmonton's number. And on that note, it is time for power forward Connor McDavid. This one's interesting, but you know what? I think Connor McDavid as an enforcer definitely takes the cake. They finish third in the league, and Connor puts up 93 points, a team leading 93 points, but they would be rinsed by the Wild in round one. Not really a rinse, to be fair. They finished fourth in the entire league, and McDavid puts up 108. He goes on to win himself another Art, a Hart, and a Ted Lindsay, but only 11 playoff showings. So once again, couldn't get it done in the loss this time. It would be the Vancouver Canucks because of course it would. Obviously, it is the Vancouver Canucks. If there's one thing I've learned so far, it's that at least the simulation is consistent with Vancouver being the demise of the Edmonton Oilers. With 20 playoff games and 33 points, Connor McDavid doesn't win the Stanley Cup and they lose in the conference finals to the St. Louis Blues. Now it is time for Connor McDavid to throw his weight around a little bit. He's going to be a grinder. Yeah, imagine that. Sending Connor McDavid out there to set the tone, not by scoring, but by hitting. 
Anyway, he got 96 points and finished fifth in the league. Not too shabby. Also, 21 playoff games, not a big deal. What is a big deal is them losing to the Dallas Stars in the conference finals. Taking seven games. That is a heartbreak. But they come back to finish first in the Pacific Division in the next year. Connor McDavid had 79 points this time around in 26 in 17 playoff games. The Colorado Avalanche sweep them. That is not nearly as heartbreaking because at least last time they stood a chance. Clearly this time they just went up against a better team. McDavid got 99 points in his final year as a grinder. He only played five playoff games. It was cut short by the Winnipeg Jets. And here we go. The moment we have all been waiting for. Con Mac as an enforcer. That's right. He's going to be out there. And his role is to fight. But it doesn't really matter. I just wanted to see how many points he gets. They finished second in the Pacific Division this time. He got 40 pims with only 15 goals this year. Imagine Connor McDavid getting 15 goals throughout an entire season. Not happening. The Dallas Stars beat them in five. They only got to round two. This year, they finished seventh in the Pacific out of the playoffs. And we don't even see point a game from Connor. The final season, they miss out again. A nice amount of points, to be fair. But wow. Clearly, Connor McDavid doesn't work as an enforcer. I don't think you needed me to tell you that, though. And here we go. Let's look at some stats. So PA on the end there, by the way, stands for playoff appearances. And obviously, the maximum is three. We did have a fairly small sample size, only doing three years of each type. But this is what we got. McDavid as a power forward actually did the best with 302 points. And the two-way forward got 294 in eight less games. So to be fair, definitely could have surpassed had he not gotten injured. Enforcer was the only negative for plus minus. But other than that, he was a plus 28 as a power forward and a plus 24 as a two-way forward. Somehow, as a playmaker, he was only plus 12. The team missed the playoffs twice when he was an enforcer and once as a sniper. And one of the things that surprises me the most is that he got the most goals as a grinder. And again, that was in 234 games. So let me know if anything there surprises you or what stands out the most from these stats. There really was not a lot of hardware won by Connor throughout this simulation. I've thought for sure as a playmaker, some magic would have happened, but no. They did not do too well. Anyway... Two-way forward and power forward. He obtained the Art, the Heart, and the Lindsay once throughout the three years. As a playmaker, sniper, grinder, and enforcer, was not able to take home any individual trophies. And as you know, I normally include team awards as well, but I don't think they won the President's Trophy once, and I know for a fact they didn't win a cup. Evidently, player type definitely does affect the simulation, at least a little bit, because you can see the big drop-off with the enforcer, and I'm curious as to why, again, he got so many goals as a grinder. To me... That just does not make sense. But maybe it's because he's getting in those corners, you know? It's not like he needs to do it to score goals in real life anyway. He just magically blows past everyone. But you know what I'm trying to say. This was a cool video suggestion, though, because we didn't create a player. We just took one that already existed. In fact, not even really debatably, but I guess someone might make an argument that he's not the biggest star in the NHL. I don't know how you could do that, but someone will try. But we took him through all six player types and found out, you know, through a small sample size what sort of performance we get. I was going to turn injuries off, but I was also kind of curious if certain player types could get injured more. Because, you know, like as a grinder, you're probably throwing your body around a bit more, so maybe you're more likely to get hurt. That did not stop him from burying the biscuit, however. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe and leave any video ideas or just suggestions in general down below in the comments. And I will see you soon.